All right, this is uh, my son's 2001 uh, Malibu. Uh, that the radiator has a big leak on the front of it, so we have to replace the radiator. So um, I, there's no YouTube videos as of this time to actually even remove the fans from the radiator or the radiator yourself. Kind of upset about that. They have everything else, but nobody wants to share how they, I'm sure I'm not the first one to do this. So by looking at the new radiator, which I'll show later on, um, we, we have to uh, unhook a bunch of stuff. First of all, the front grill has to come off. There is a YouTube video how to do that. I'll cover it here, real easy to do because there's connections on the radiator to do that. The fans back here, the two fans, have to come off. It looks pretty easy when you look at the uh, new radiator where they clip on, but the problem is all the plumbing in there too. And you really, you can see it if you know what to look for, where the hoses go in. Um, so right now the radiator has all water in it because uh, it all flushed out. And, um, and so uh, we're not worried about hazmat getting under the floor. However, I will do my best to catch. I do care about that uh, since I am OSHA. Uh, so, um, so uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll cover this just to give you a, a little background here. It is hotter than it's humid as heck today, so I'm not going to do all the work right now. So I'm going to put this on a tripod, and we're going to start. And uh, and uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, disconnect or probably remove that battery, only because the top part of the fan right there will hit it. The top clip over there. Um, I'll point it out if I can. This is a wide angle lens so we're going to be covering a lot from both sides. Alright, so I'm going to put on a tripod and go from there. Now in here, okay, I want to show you I think it did focus. Okay, that's the fan that's sitting on, so on top of the clip. Okay, so that this is the inside. Hey, remember when you're uh, disconnecting the battery, you always do the negative side. Uh, see my body is up against the, the metal. If I were to touch that positive side, that's 12 volts up to 20 amps that comes out of it. It takes 20 amps to crank your engine. That's a lot. That will burn you really bad. Okay, so uh, don't mess with that side yet. Disconnect this side. I've already loosened it, so I'm just coming in. I can tell that this, these terminals need to be cleaned. There's a lot of powder coming out of that. So I'm going to put this over here, and that is now disconnected. Now this side, I'm going to be kind of brave now. Negative is disconnected, so I'm not going to get shocked. So I'm going to touch the, I'm touching the positive side now. That's proof to the pudding. I'm a, I was an electrician in the Navy, aviation electrician in the Navy for 20 years. So um, this guy's now disconnected. I'm going to take this. I don't like looking for the proper wrench, so I just get a big old tool to take it. Now this side needs to be uh, cleaned also because there's a lot of white. So hey, we're going to do some preventative maintenance on this. Look at the little white stuff on this thing. So we, we got to do some cleaning in there. So this battery, I don't know if there's something else holding it down. The other probably is on, on the tray. It's probably corroded in there. Be careful you don't get your finger. Yeah, there's a bolt down there. So uh, nevertheless, uh, I'll get the battery out. There's another bolt down there that has to be loosened up to get the battery out. So, uh, so I'll get that. But the key thing is uh, be safe uh, pulling the terminals off. So that's uh, that that part I know. Electronics I know very well. So um, that's a caution for you. Don't touch that side until this side is disconnected. Takes a 13 millimeter um, socket down there and uh, turn this around to where it unlocks. And I'm going to loosen that up. And all it is is this little channel that moves away. Gotta be careful I don't pull the whole thing out of it. Beautiful. <laughs> so that should just pop out of the way. And I should be able to lift this guy out. Because it has to come out in order for that to have clearance to come back. I sure wish I had a buddy that was a mechanic. Do this. All right, and I'm busting. Nope, it's still turning. Let's see, forward. It has to come. It has to be released in the back. Not having a good time here. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm doing this so you have know what you need to do to get that battery out. Of a, of a Malibu 2001. I think this covers uh, 2000 
to 2003. We did see a, a book that just gave written directions on how to change a, a, a radiator. It's loose enough to turn with a finger. Okay, and that, that part is out. So I'm going to put that up there. I should be able to slide this back and pull the battery out. It is a heavy piece. I'm going to set it up. So now it is out of the way. So I did that, so now you know what needs to be done. 13 inch or 13 millimeter socket with an extension, about a six foot, ex six inch extension. Foot is kind of long. Well, I found that uh, I had to take the tray out for the, uh, where the battery sits on, okay, to, to get down, down there and that would have to be removed anyway. It is a, um, it is a nine millimeter, um, screw that comes out. Originally there was three screws, one there, one there, and one there. I just broke this one off because it wouldn't turn, so I did my best and uh, now it's broken, but you know, I don't care about that because one screw is going to hold down there, one's there, and it's going to be fastened in place. Hey, it's a 2001 uh, Malibu. How much money do you really want to put into this? Okay, so uh, go out and buy a new one of these, tap that one out, get new screws. Uh, you know, if it needs to be, if it was only one screw doing it, yeah, I'd do that. I'm going to put this over here. And I'm going to put the hardware inside. Always keep the hardware with the items because, you know, when, when you go put things back together, I hate having things left over. Imagine me working on an F-14 or F-18 and, uh, you know, in the Navy and uh, putting it all back together and have stuff left over. Or worst off, leaving a tool inside and not counting for your tools. So, uh, so that's a very big issue there and I treat the same way with a vehicle. Have everything you took out of the vehicle put back in or accounted for. Okay, there's two things I put on the ground. One is the bucket to catch any of the water that might be coming out. I did not find a drain point underneath the radiator like what's on most other radiators. I didn't find any anything to open up, any valve to open up or anything like that. I put an old carpet down there because I like to save my knees when I'm getting underneath the thing. So uh, I've already uh, used that to, to show you the screws underneath. And um, also I did a measurement of the, of the other radiator. Uh, the transmission radiator is 24 inches. The new radiator is 26 inches. So I don't think they're the same radiator at all. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to, um, I'm going to try putting this over here. I don't know how well you're going to see me taking off the, the hoses with this. Um, I don't know if I can get in there with the tripod to show you. I'll do my best. Okay, uh, these these uh, are clamp type hoses, so you're going to get a uh, needle nose pliers or uh, uh, some kind of a uh, some kind of a wrench that you can actually uh, reach down there and squeeze them together. There is a specific tool, but you know if you go to the store and buy it, how often are you going to use it? Okay, so try using something you already have. There's a retainer right here, so I'm going to mount. So I'm going to do that. Now when I take this out, I'm going to put the screw right back into this place so we don't lose the screw. So I'm keeping, uh, just like with this hose over here, I keep the clamp with the hose. Alright, so we don't lose the clamp. So as you're doing things, uh, and you got to remember, everything's got to, go, got to go back on. Take your time doing this, right? So, uh, so now with this out of the way, I should be able to get uh, that, that um, clamp off. Now something else I did is I moved the uh, drip pan over to this side since I'm working on this side. So any fluid that falls down goes into that drip pan. Okay, when, uh, when you're doing this, it's better to find somebody with the smallest hands in your house. Because I'll tell you what, getting to these hoses are really, really tough. I had to change out the hoses on this thing uh, way back before I was on YouTube. and. Uh, what a disaster. So what I did is after I put the, when I went to put the hoses back on, I had all these things pointing up. These are like, uh, they're closure things. Uh, let's see, there's no screws on them. Um, you got their clamps and you got to hold them and then pull them back and then wedge the hose off. And I'm having a heck of a time even getting on one of these. And uh, not a fun thing at all. <laughs> That's not working. Needle nose is not working. I'm going to try channel locks if I can get the channel locks in there because of all the stuff in the way. And that's not working. So I need to get a pair of pliers, I think. I'm going to try channel Need those again. I uh, remember perseverance. 
Watch out your fingers aren't in there. When this thing lets loose, it's going to clamp down. You know, your tool I'm talking about. And I can't fit two hands in there. This is... You know, I work on computers and it's so much easier. I'm a photographer and it's so much easier. Why the heck am I doing this? Because it would cost me four to five hundred dollars for a mechanic to do this. When I could just take my time, which I actually I want my vehicle back. My, my wife's driving my Jeep and I'm without a car today because this is down. Like I have nothing better to do. I actually uh, just put a crab cake, how to make crab cakes on a video on YouTube. Just made brownies, no video needed for that. Brownies are too easy directions on the box, you know. Um, I have a salad to make. The crab cakes are were made for my uh, father. Uh, actually, a church, a priest. Not my father, father, but a, uh, a priest, a Catholic priest. I'm with the Knights of Columbus, and we're having a party tomorrow for the Knights, and he's uh, he's coming to it and found out he doesn't like to pluck crabs or pick crabs, uh, break the shells and all that, So, uh, but he does like crab meat. So I made some crab cakes for him, and that is now on YouTube. So if you like crab cakes, go look for it. How to make crab cakes. And uh, I am not having any success with that. I'm going to try over here. Maybe, uh, maybe getting one of these off will help me out. Give me some confidence. This is a uh, this is an upper hose. It's really really convenient now that the battery's out of the way to get this. I'll probably use the other tool. And uh, sweat's coming down on my glasses. Not cool. Not cool. Mechanics have the tool for this. So you can get in there and actually... I got this one done, and all I have to do is now work it back. If I can work it back, this is the issue. I can work it back. Oh, this isn't... Okay, let's try... How did I do it last time? I think I clamped it down and I pulled the hose off. Actually, this is fun. So now it's on the side. This guy, what is that? I'm moving the whole fan assembly right now. <laughs> Actually, the radiator. I'm moving. So I'm going to, I have it, I'm pulling the hose back. Gotta watch out you don't bust your knuckles if it lets loose. It is working off. Take some time. Just be careful of your knuckles. If this thing lets loose and your knuckles are back there, oh. And it's starting to warm up outside. So what's the issue here? The clamp is pretty loose. Okay, I have the clamp. The clamp's off the hose. I'm trying to. Oh, there's and there's water going down. Get the bucket. Move over. Looks like all water. It is all water. There's no coolant, so no, nothing got in the ground. We have well water here, and uh, I'm very skeptical about even putting weed eater on the ground, let alone fertilizer. I'm very cautious of when to do that. So that's one hose going off. Now you got to do that to two other hoses, and they're on the passenger side. This is the upper hose that I did. What I have found that sometimes it's better to disconnect the hoses that are on the, the overflow over here and the one on the engine. Now, most radiators have a cap over here to let loose. The Malibu has one that's over on the overflow. I'm gonna force a focus on this. Okay, so you see some, uh, let's get in here and take a look. Okay, um, so that's your, that's your overflow right there. That's on your, uh, your thing, and I already loosened it up. And actually it comes right off. There's nothing in there, there's no steam, this is totally cold. It's been sitting here for a while. I want to leave that kind of loose. You want to keep it there so it doesn't disappear on you. Uh, whatever, it just... Okay, uh, you can see that the, that's still dripping down there. So, that, so these other two, uh, the other two hoses need to be done. Um, 
and uh, pr probably the better uh, the better area is uh, right, right up where it connects here and here to take off until you can get down there and do that. But when you saw me moving that, you saw the whole radiator moving, so it's not fastened in there very very well. The issue is getting all this hardware out of the way. So I'm going to keep pressing along. Uh, this and uh, you know it's got to be better than taking it in a shop and losing it for a few days and paying five six hundred dollars for it. Okay, I managed to get a uh, uh, the top overflow hose off. Okay, which was a lot of fun. And I can't get to the the middle hose that goes to the overflow. Uh, so what I'm doing is uh, I'm using a uh, five eighths, which seemed to fit just fine. Uh, you gotta understand that metric over there. I don't know. Maybe that was made in Japan. This is made in the United States. I have not a clue why one side's metric and one side's standard. So um, I'm taking off one of the metal uh, pipes that's going into the radiator. So you want to be careful you don't strip this guy out uh, because it is a pressure fitting. Let's see. When it comes out, I'll see if it's actually a pressure fitting. Wait, look. I know what one looks like, or if it's just a bolt. Um, Nope, it's uh, narrowed down at the end. It is a pressure fitting. So um, that is going to go into, uh, that's corresponding to, with the new one that I have over over there. So that is indeed on that. And now we can see the top clip to where where the fans are. So this guy looks like it goes up to the uh, uh, transmission ra radiator up in the front. So I'm not going to mess with that yet. I'm really, I'm really hoping all we have to do is disconnect the transmission radiator that stays in place and we're going to slide after we get the fan out of the way uh, that's going to be a lot of fun because <laughs> this whole thing is in the way and this going down here is in the way of the fan so I don't know I, there's a there's a retainer right here so I'm going to mount so I'm going to do that now when I take this out I'm going to put the screw right back into this place so we don't lose the screw so I'm keeping uh, just like with this hose over here I keep the clamp with the hose all right, so we don't lose the clamp. So as you're doing things, uh, and you gotta remember, everything's go, go, gotta go back on. Take your time doing this, right? So uh, so now with this out of the way, I should be able to get uh, that that um, clamp off. Now something else I did is I moved the uh, drip pan over to this side since I'm working on this side. So any fluid that falls down goes into that drip pan. Before I actually went on break, I decided to come uh, try something else. Okay, uh, I noticed when I was moving this around that these guys were moving. And it looks like they're uh, retainers, so I already loosened them up. I used a, uh, a uh, 10 millimeter socket to, uh, to remove them. So they're finger tight right now. So when I did this, this loosened up, and it looks like it's a retainer for the top of the radiator. All right, and on the new radiator, I don't see any place where this can actually mount in, but you know, we'll take a look at it when it comes out. They swivel out of the way, and look how much movement now in there. So there's a lot of movement. I think we're making progress here. So I'm going to take these, and uh, normally I would put them back in, but I'm worried about play underneath. So I'm going to put them in these holes here, and hopefully when I put the hood down, uh, you know, to go overnight or whatever, that they're not going to be in the way. If they are, then I'll figure something something else. So now that that's happening, I can get to this guy, which is holding this line into place and is actually hooked up to the fan. And uh, so I'm going to work on that now. Uh, thing is to find out which which size. So what I do, I take the extension because I can't reach down there. Put this guy on there, and I'll just set it on top. Let's see. Hey, look at that. This is the right. It's 10 millimeter. So, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to crank it. And you know, if the screw drops, guess what's down below? A drip hand. It's not going to go in there. If you have, like me, I have a gravel driveway. Hard to find things. Luckily, I have a metal detector. And I can find things when they're they're dropped. Um, that is free and clear. The screw is still in there, so I'm going to leave the screw in there. But it's free and clear of the uh, of that, and this actually lifts up and out of the way because it's a flexible hose on this side. So that's a big plus. So I'm going to, you know, I, we'll be able to we'll be able to get that fan out. Uh, there's some kind of a shield here. Don't think that's going to be in the way. So we are making progress. So uh, so I think the next thing to do is get down 
where this screw is. There should be a screw or something. Or does that just pop out? Let's, let's give it a tug. Nope, no luck on that. Uh, down on the bottom here, okay, is another thing. And you're just going to slide this. I can't do it one hand, but this top part's going to come towards you, and this part's going to go down. And that'll separate the harness from the fan. And I think there's another one down, down on the bottom. I'm trying to get the camera over there. Uh, let's see. Get the camera over there. I hope it's in focus. Anyway, um, it's down on the bottom. And I think, is there another one? Yep, there's another one way over there. So, uh, so all those have to be disconnected from the fan to make this totally independent, all the harness and everything. That's actually going over to the uh, other, other coolant that's in front, other uh, radiator that's in front of the main radiator. All right, so uh, that's what I'm, it's only about 97 degrees out here. At least we're in the shade now and there's a little bit of breeze. So, and the uh, camera hasn't overheated. It overheated on me once on the, on the pier and shut down while I was uh, shooting Osprey. So, so far so good out here. Okay, down here, there's a plug. That plug needs to come off. This top lever that lifts up, that top lever right there, lifts up and then you pull the plug off. That's uh, disconnecting the fan. And uh, I think there's another one down there for this fan. Okay, it goes over here. So you gotta disconnect those two. Then the fan should be completely disconnected electrically. Okay, that connector down there that's pulled out uh, is just like the one that's over here that I got. So I'm trying to go, come around so where you can see it. Now, the problem I had is this tab on the bottom, on that one, was on the bottom. And what you needed was, uh, was a screwdriver like this. It's a small screwdriver, fits in the palm of my hand. You have to reach underneath it and actually lift up the tab and pull it off. Okay, so be very careful. This is not something that you want to bend. Oh, there goes my screwdriver. <laughs> There's a blooper. Okay, uh, it didn't go into the... It didn't go into the uh, into the pot so it's on the gravel that's easy enough to find. Anyway, uh, there's something that you don't want to bend, a break, something like what I did with the uh, the tray over there. So so I busted off the, uh, the corner of the tray. So uh, that is easy enough to replace if I wanted to. That connector is uh, a harness. You don't want to break that. Be careful. Oh boy, after much, much trial and error, I finally got this thing off of that. That's the fan. See how loose that fan is now? What I had to do is I had to take a screwdriver and pry the thing open, but not break it. Not that uh, we're really worried about it. That's part of the old uh, radiator anyway. Break it and then slide that in. The bottom one came out along with it. So the other side should work just the same, and the next step is to slide the fans out, hopefully. But uh, that is so important. I need, to, I need to show you that. Now I'm dripping sweat all over my camera. Great. Anyway, um, Anyway, very important to do in order to get it. It was very frustrating. It took me about a half hour or so to figure out how to do that. So now I'm here to show you that it could be done. Okay. The other one, when I took this one out over here, the other one you just slide it this way over and it popped right out. So this whole thing is loose. Excuse me. You can see just how dirty my hands are getting here too. So I hope that uh, diamond ring actually cleans out nicely too. <laughs> anyway, um, so the, uh, the fan's kind of free floating in there. So I'm hoping during this part of the video, I'm going to be able to get this all the way out. The thing is, what is stopping it? It doesn't seem like anything's in the way. I'm hoping something else doesn't have to come up. Something's hanging up on this side. harness. I'll be darned if this guy's going to be in the way. It's got to slide out. Since this is over here, I'm thinking it slides out this way and up. So we're going to come up on this side. And try to slide it out. Oh boy. Okay, there comes one. Slide this over.
trying not to break anything else. Half of it's out. Here it comes. It's like giving birth, I think. There it is. What else is on it? Anything? Anything tied? Hey, look at that. The fan's out. It's got to be easier to put back in. <laughs> so I think I'm going to make this a whole different video on how to replace uh, the fan system in there if your fan busts. <laughs> Boy, what an accomplishment for, for a guy that never do, has done this before. So, uh, hey, once you do it, celebrate it a little bit. Okay, now what we're doing is uh, make like this is a new new fan system you just got. Remember now, on the bottom of this fan, the connector clip was on the bottom. We used a screwdriver to back it off. All right, and your other connector goes here, and it was on the connector was on top. And then you have a harness that actually ran along the bottom, through here, through here, and then uh, up over here. So all those have to be put back on, and this is the clamp. Uh, the screws in the bucket down below. It actually fell down there, which is a nice place, not in the gravel, didn't have to go looking for it. So uh, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so now we're going to slide this in. And remember how we took it out, we're going to hook up this side first. After we get through all the plumbing, and watch out you don't cut your fingers like I did already. Okay, we got this. Okay. Anyway, got to bring this up. Okay, not that far. How far can we go down on that side? Go down. All right. So now, I'm sorry I can't show it to, this, to you this on that too well, but what we're going to do. It's actually hard to, to see. Can I get me down any further? Okay, I can. Okay. Without coming over this far too. too much. Yeah, maybe maybe you do need to come over. Oh, hold on, hold on. Clear this. Okay. Uh, I want to go in the slot over here, but I want to go on top of that first. I think we're going to have to just go down. Put it on top of them. Don't set it down. Mm -hmm. How can can you go down? Gotcha. We get some cables out of the way. Okay. Okay. And slide it over. Have it sitting. Have it rested on top of that. Got to get it on top of the. Yeah, I'm about two inches away from the one on the bottom. Okay, well, far over here. What's stopping this down there? We just got to wiggle. That's everything. What's, what's holding this? It's something over here, I think. Don't want to clip your hands on anything. Okay, I see what it's hitting. Okay. Can we go towards you, any? Uh, try. Got plenty of room. I can't pull it. Okay. okay. It's, it's happening about another half inch. Okay. I, need, I can't see down okay, there. Okay. No, All down. right. I'm All right. Now, now we're see how it's sitting inside the radiator. Yeah. Okay. That's what we want to do. Okay. So I'm sitting. The, okay. I'm sitting in there. I'm ready to push down. I think. Okay. Do you have your top okay. line? Top lined. Bottoms lined. Okay. And I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Okay, so it's in. Wow, how easy was that? So now it's just to hook up all the hardware again. Okay, so we have a we have a screw up here that we got to get in. That's this guy right here. Is this the same? Tell me, this is the same size? Nope. Let me get a. Could have no chance it could be a number ten again, right? Let's make sure we get this uh, cable to work. Yeah, the, the cable. Yeah, the, do that. Okay, is the cable free to yeah, be around? This one. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, the connectors. Okay, that's uh, that's on top, and the other one's on the bottom. Okay. So we're actually plugging in the electrical lines. It's right over here. Where's the socket wrench? Is it up there? And that clamp was on. That clip was on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That clip was on oh. the bottom. Swing, swing around. 
upside down. Yes. And that's why it was so difficult to get off. Yeah, that, that, that's why I had to get it down there with a small screwdriver and pry it open. I can't see that without my glasses, it's kind of blurry, so. All right, well this might actually get done today. Isn't that sweet? So actually, if you know what you're doing, it'll go pretty quick. Okay, I'm gonna okay. Well, let me get this. Uh, these go in here. Yeah, they they get. Let me let me uh, turn this guy down. Okay. Uh, where are you? Uh, I think it was all the way around. This this went on the back of this. Okay. Okay. So the part that's hooked up to the fan for uh, for this uh, screw to go in this clamp goes on the back of the one that's on the line. So it's toward the back of the vehicle. All right, and then you screw this guy in. This is the line that's uh, for your coolant for the uh, transmission. And that just came off the <laughs> thing there. All right, so that's done. A little uh, what do you need it for? Open that clamp up. Uh, you just slide it together. I slid these apart. Slid. Slid. Yeah, you just slide them together. That's what I did. So, so, uh, and that's oh, that should have went in. That's the way I took them off. You think it just uh, pushes together? Yeah, it's supposed to just push together. Well. Okay, I got it. Okay, yeah, that's no. That, how did you get it? I'm doing. Oh, you know what? It has to be. Yeah, it's not holding. It's not holding. <laughs> Try that one. And there's one on the bottom too. So you see how how uh, okay, got it. if you got that one, there's one more on the, on the bottom there. And then all you have to do is an op check. You know, uh, the fan's not going to turn on until the temperature of the coolant okay. is uh, is required Some for it to be turned on. So it, 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 all you got to do is uh, run your vehicle for a while, let the let the freon just uh, heat up. Well, not the freon, the uh, coolant fr heat up, so <coughs> then the fans will kick on, and that's how you do an op check. Okay, do you have this side bolted in? Actually, there's nothing to bolt yeah, in. Yeah, there's nothing else to okay. bolt in. So, they, they, so all you're done, you're done on that side? I, I think I, I think just hooking up that hose and that's it. Okay. Putting the battery back in. So we're just uh, getting the last clamps in and we'll put the battery in. And then we'll uh, put water in to do a, a flush. And uh, in fact, I'm going to move the yeah, this, this has enough to, to hold all that. Those are seated. Okay, seated and good. And battery is okay. right here. Battery tray. One screw left on the battery tray. All right, forward. Get rid of all your extra pieces here. Yeah, the one screw is going to go right there. Let me make sure what size is this. What happened to the side? You know where a socket wrench is? Where socket wrench? The little one? The regular one? Yeah, the one that was with this. Did I leave it over here? It's right here. Okay. My, my bus. Okay, this says a number 10 on it, I think. You got a wire brush? Oh, I gotta clean off the terminals, yeah. I, I even said that in the video. Uh, yeah, I do. Here, put that down. This is the retainer for that. Let me go find a wire brush. You got any big uh, fender washers? No, I don't. I gotta find a wire brush. I thought I had a wire brush. Uh, you know, I got one of these. <sighs> one big asset to have. Yep. <laughs> Perfect for this. Mm -hmm. That's what it's designed for. Yep. 
So uh, I'm going to clean the terminals on the battery. What I'm doing, and uh, actually, I'll bring this up here. Man, the battery's heavy. What I'm doing is I'm cleaning out these, getting all the corrosion out. And what uh, he's going to do is do the same thing to those. This is a preventative maintenance because you don't want your your connection to the battery to fail while you're driving either. And the old cars, the symptom was, uh, you know, your radio was you'd start going out. This would start going. Your headlights be the last thing that goes out, then your car would die. But that that's uh, depending if your alternator is going bad or if the battery's going bad. It's just different troubleshooting techniques on that. Yeah, the the top of that positive is really bad. Done with that. I'm going to get this screwed. Sorry, that's all going your way. The breeze is going that way. Sorry. Okay. Okay, we need to put. That's going to go in off the battery. Okay. Try it. Okay, this is number 10. And I put that over here, extension. I think that's uh, number 10 on this. Okay, let's make sure that's number 10. Yep. Nope, it's not. Okay, 11 or 12. Uh, oh, you know what? It might be over here. No, that's U.S. science. Yeah, I know. One of these was U.S. though. There it is. Half inch. Yeah, yeah I was saying that one, one side is... Uh, get the extension here. Okay, it's not tidy too. One side of the vehicle is standard, one side is metric. That's kind of weird. Keep this negative away from that because we're right next to where the positive is. Yeah. <laughs> that worked fine. <laughs> That's why I'm a electrician, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care about well, anything else get me when I'm playing with positive side. Okay, uh, positive on first. Remember that's the hot side, but it's not hot until the negative is touching. So we're not really worried about it. we got to get that thing seated. There it is. And I don't use a wrench on that anymore since that's a heavy thing and I just crank it down. Okay, that's good. Put the cap on prevents any other metals from touching that. Now this side, where's the screw? Okay, this side is negative. Come out, don't. don't know where that came from. Well, it's just sitting right here like this. Well, that might be the way it was. It's gotta go somewhere. I didn't I mess know. with anything up there. Huh. Okay, we're gonna get a spark when we put this thing in. Big. Okay, so, and there it is. I didn't make me jump, I totally expect it's still sparking while my finger's on there. All right, that's just making sure, you know, that's a good sign because it's a, a complete circuit. A lot of people don't do that, they're afraid of sparks and all that, but if you're an electrician, you know what you're doing? Not a problem. We know the battery's good. Okay, next thing is going to be a, a flush. Red light? Yep. Okay, okay so what I did, under here is a valve and I turned it counterclockwise. I'm going to get the old one here. Hopefully this thing will focus and you can see it. So this is sitting like this right now. 
And so over here, and it doesn't do it on this, you got to turn this, and this doesn't turn all the way. So it's counterclockwise, and if you pull it all the way out, it makes one heck of a mess. So uh, just turn, pull it out to where it's on the last thread, keep it in there, and it'll, and it'll flush out the system. That's what we're doing now, is we're flushing the system. So uh, I may go ahead, because it's all water. It's full right now for the bubbling at the top of okay, here. Well, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the thing out. Okay. And then so uh, really, off. really have it flush. So, so I have it gushing out. So that's that's the serious flush that it's doing now. So it's all water. It's not going to hurt the environment. So we're we're uh, we're actually hoping rust and stuff in the system. I heard 30 seconds. Somebody on a different vehicle. This is how you flush. Just let it go for 30 seconds. And then let it drain. Turn off and let it drain all the way. And then we're going to plug it up, close up everything, put the Freon in, and then let that kick on until the fans kick on. It's going to do an off check of the fans, and then uh, make sure that the system stays cool. So we're going to... Okay, that's uh, a... That's the drain, yeah. But we, uh, it's all water going down into the gravel anyway, so... We're, uh, we're going to let the rest of the water drain out now. We just did about 30 seconds of, uh, of draining. I, I didn't have uh, the other... I didn't have a video down low enough to show you, so I'm going to show you again. Okay, this is the... Uh, this is the thing that you have to turn counterclockwise. I have it in my hand now. I actually pulled it out so we get a good flush out of the thing. On the bottom. So it's on the driver's side, all the way in the bottom, and right alongside the, uh, the transmission coolant uh, radiator. So that's going to finish up and then I'm going to plug it in after it's done, done draining. Okay, we're doing a, we just put a gallon of, uh, let me show what kind it is. Remember to go buy a uh, manufacturer, it's next pool. All right, made for this kind. You can't put any other in it, there'll be no slime right on top. Okay, fans came on, checks good. All right, that's our object for the fans. So that completes the fan video. All right, and, uh, if you like it, go ahead and pass it on to a friend. Otherwise, I'm going to press on with uh, the leak check. So, uh, what we're doing now, the fans are on that's telling that the, uh, the coolant is up to temperature. Uh, right now, the coolant was in the garage, and it's about 94, 97 degrees outside, so it's already at that temperature. So, the so, uh, batteries in there are sturdy. The car started just fine. We're waiting for that to go down because the engine's going to suck up. Once the thermostat actually kicks, it's going to suck up the rest of that and be on top off the fluid. Right now, no leaks. Once that goes down, we know the pressure is hitting. And we're going to check all of our hoses too. That's why it's called a leak check.
us one more time. $52 off eBay. That's it. Friend, help out. I got some experience. Never did this before. Trial and error. I'm doing this for you. So now there's a video on YouTube on how to change out a radiator and a fan, okay, on YouTube for a 2000, all the way up to 2003 Chevy Malibu. If you like the video, tell a friend, and you, I, hey, subscribe to my uh, videos because it's free.